back to the channel. This is Matt and you're watching No Luck Trucking. So it's been a little while. Uh, we filmed that video that got put out a few days ago. And then from there we had a, a load that we couldn't really film or talk about. You know, it was one of those like high value team expedited stuff. So we didn't really just kind of took took a few days off. Uh, didn't film, didn't didn't record a video, anything like that. It was good, it was peaceful, but um, just kind of wanted to, we started making a video of the next load that we were gonna run, you know, like we normally do, but <laughs> we got over to the place today and the guy said, hey man, bear with me. I'm the only one here, uh, it's gonna be a bit. And we're like, yeah, cool, no, no problem, you know. We were there like an hour and a half early. It's like, whatever, take your time. If you put us in a door, I mean, we could sit there as long as you, you know, let us know what's going on. I don't mind. We could sit there and wait. They had a bathroom there, so we have food on the truck. But um, then we get a call from the agent about 20 minutes later saying, hey, the product isn't going out today. Um, they're, it won't be ready until tomorrow. So I was like, what? The guy just told me that it was going to be a bit, but... You know, it shouldn't be any problem. So I go back in to check with the guy. He said, yeah, man, they're, they're backed up. They didn't put your product into the totes that we needed it to be in. And um, since he was the only guy there, he couldn't load it, package it, and put it on our truck because by the time you got to that, it would be so late in the day that nobody was there to print the bills apparently. So, so we, uh, we thought about it. Cause like right then, I mean, you can definitely cut the load and, and go because we, we agreed in the contract that it was going, going to pick up today, which is Friday and it was going to deliver on Monday in New Jersey. But, uh, once, once you change the terms of the the contract i mean you're you're able to walk away if if that's the thing so i went back in and i was like hey guys let's let's talk about this because i don't mind waiting we don't mind the the wait we could we could pick it up saturday and still get there no problem but if we wait until tomorrow which is saturday and this doesn't go out this is going to hurt us badly because we have another load lined up after this that we need to be in Pennsylvania for on Tuesday so if we were to not if we were to gamble on this and pick it up Saturday and it's not ready that would that would hurt us uh, a little bit more than you know just the one day delay because Friday is about the last day that you're gonna get a load and also uh, on their side as well like if we canceled Good luck finding a truck with less than a day's notice to pick up on a Saturday in the middle of nowhere in Oklahoma. So we looked at it, it's almost $5 a mile to go from Oklahoma to New Jersey. So we wanted the load still. And like I said, the, the day isn't gonna bother us. We're, we're still gonna be able to get there. We could pick it up Sunday and still make it on time. So I went in there and I stressed to the guys how harmful it would be is if we waited and it wasn't ready tomorrow. And he's like, no, 100%, we're, either, we're even going to come in tomorrow to load you if you want to stay on the load. He's like, if not, I don't, you know, no biggie, I don't mind. But if you are going to keep it, we're going to be here to load you tomorrow. He's like, we're gonna get here at seven. If you wanna get here at seven, that's cool. We'll get you loaded and out the door. I was like, all right, we'll stay. Because like that long of a run for almost $5 a mile, can't beat that, especially coming out of Oklahoma. So we want the load. I just don't want to gamble and have it uh, backfire. So. so that's where we're at. Um, yeah, so I guess this is like a uh, mandatory layover. So I was like, why don't we call the agent and see if they're offering layover pay as well? And we were a little hesitant because the load pays really well and it doesn't really affect us. But I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we had a contract of what day it was gonna pick up. We even called yesterday to make sure everything was good to go. And she said it was. 
Um, so, I mean, the, the customer, it's a business expense to them to pay layover. So we called and asked and the lady was like, oh, thank you so much for staying. You know, this is, it would really hurt to try to find coverage for the load. It's like 100%, I'm calling them right now to see about the, uh, the layover and how much it would be. I'll send you an updated freight bill, the whole deal. So I think everybody in the situation is happy now. There's even a truck stop literally half a mile away from the place. So we're going to go over there. It's an off brand and they don't have showers, but uh, we showered this morning right before we came here. So we're good to, to stay the night there. Uh, they have bathrooms. They even have a driver's lounge. It looks like a pretty big place. So we're going to see. We'll see how it is. I mean, we're sitting at a, a Walmart right now that's about a mile away from the, the place. Liz is in getting some groceries. I'm sitting here just kind of watching the truck, make sure, you know, if I can move it if, if we're in anybody's way or anything like that. Um, so we're gonna be good. The, the truck is stocked and, and everything, so we'll be fine on that. But another thing I wanted to, so like on these in-between days where, cause I typically don't like to post about the load that we're on while we're on it so anytime you guys see a video it's after we've delivered or um you know af after the load's already been taken care of so i don't show the product and when you know like in transit where we are and stuff like that while we're still on the load just for for safety's sake you know no reason to give anybody more of a reason to see what's inside of our trailer if that makes sense but so on these in-between days I really want to I want to do the uh, the loads that are available in the area see what kind of rates are see what the fuel is like because uh, a lot of people like that in the last video that I posted you know just giving an idea of, of what the loads uh, the freight market looked like on the, the Landstar world so let's go ahead and do that so we are in Pryor, Oklahoma. We'll do a 200 mile search radius. Uh, we'll do a pickup from today. Uh, we're gonna have to do like a four day window because Saturday and Sunday really don't count. So it would be today, uh, Monday and Tuesday. That should be a, an accurate representation. We'll do drive in because I don't know anything about uh, flatbed or any of those we'll do our three dollar a mile minimum let's see so we did 200 miles search radius four day range actually let's see what just today brings as well let's see what kind of other filters we want to put in um yeah we'll do a minimum distance for us uh, we'll do a minimum run of, let's say 300 miles. And we'll do destination country, just the US. So we don't go to Canada. I have no desire to go to Canada. Um, let's do max stops. We'll do, we'll do one max stop. I really don't like the multi-stop runs, but it's neither here nor there. All right, so 217 results. Oh, wow. So the first two are to uh, Alaska from Joplin. Actually a pretty good rate, surprisingly. $5 a mile. But uh, realistically, you have to cut that in half because if you go up there with the drive-in, you're, you're really not getting anything out of there. So $250 a mile for, let's say, 6,000 miles is what they... They have it listed as 3,000. So like I said, you're going to... Well, I guess to be fair, I would have to look up from Alaska back down to like say somewhere like Washington or you know somewhere somewhere on the very top even though those markets are not that good but it'd be decent I guess if you really wanted to visit uh, Alaska there is a Joplin to Turlock California that's actually good four dollars a mile it's light it's a nine thousand pounds man that is not bad at all. Apparently the service is bad out here. Okay, so we're loaded. So it's a 72 mile deadhead from exactly where we are. 
and about 1800 miles looks like delivers on the 5th that's a lot of time yeah next Friday that's a whole entire week to run a little under 1800 miles oh must drop trailer nope that's garbage absolute garbage yeah the dash cam agrees uh, yeah any of the loads where you have to drop your trailer at the shipper for two or three days absolute trash that's why the rates so so high uh, let's see, there's a uh, Springfield to New Hampshire paying 467. That's not bad at all. It's decently light compared. It's 25,000 pounds. That's not bad. That's posted a bunch of times by the same agent. Uh, well, you can go to a dead zone for 316. That's not good. So surprisingly, okay. This guy's out here doing donuts. That's cool. <laughs> See if he's gonna do it again. Do it again. Ah, oh, he left. Come on. That was interesting. Uh, yeah. So surprisingly, it's a decent amount of loads, and in, in the uh, uh, we are right over the border. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we are east of Tulsa between Tulsa and the uh, state line for Missouri, Arkansas. Uh, so yeah, decent market here, not too bad. 200 loads to, uh, to choose from at over $3 a mile. Let's uh, fly flying around. Let's bump that rate up to, let's say $4 a mile. Let's see what it drops down to. 37, so that's not bad. See how many are duplicates. One, two, oh yeah, a bunch of duplicates, but yeah, not bad at all. There's a there's a decent amount of choices out there, surprisingly. So let's check what the uh, fuel prices are in this area, because uh, we're noticing fuel is dropping, not as fast as the rates are dropping. But uh, let's see. So right now in this area, uh, looks like with the Landstar discount, fuel is uh, 433. That's kind of high. Let's see. Let me search around. Actually, it's not high. So Joplin area is like four 460 with the discount. Zoom in on this. Let's see what's here. Yeah, four, uh, 438 in Loma Linda. Yeah, it's off 44, so not bad. I guess prices, fuel prices are going down. Uh, rates, eh, like I said, rates are, are holding steady on the good ones. Uh, the average loads I would say the price for the average loads are kind of going down, but then also the availability in some of the areas is going way down as well. So I uh, wanted to kind of make a video of like what we have been doing when rates are down, fuel is up, the load availability is down, just kind of like how do you survive in this market? In, in you know, all the old heads have been through this multiple times. There's always like dips and, and peaks and stuff in trucking. It kind of like levels itself out, but you know, I'm not predicting the end of trucking or anything like that, like you see on some of the other videos. But right now we have been, so if you watch any other YouTube videos, like if you watch Blue Ribbon Logistics or anything, if, if you're interested in coming to uh, Landstar or any of the other videos that kind of teach you, you know, what what to do at Landsar to kind of like find the loads and things like that. They always tell you to um, cultivate relationships with agents. And we spent our beginning months at Landsar trying to do this because we thought that's the only way you survive. You know, that's what everyone says in the videos. And we never really had that, that luck. You know, like we're not sending our business cards to people. We're not cold calling the agents and things like that. But to be fair, we also jumped in the market when it was like pretty high, you know, loads were 
easy. You could find five, six, seven dollar a mile loads, easy. You could pull up the the uh, load board, scroll down, find what you want, throw your finger down, and and you know get that load. Whereas now, like the good paying loads get snatched up really fast, or they never hit the board. I know that's a big point of contention for some people is like it's not fair that it never hits the, the load board but those people that are getting those loads have cultivated the relationships with the agents so we we don't go out like brown nosing any agents or anything like that we we try to stay as professional as we can uh with agents and if it's a load that we like and like the agent even if it has some hiccups and stuff i mean the agent isn't the one that's canceling these loads on us typically you know like they're just passing along the information from their customer so we'll always keep in touch with the agents we email them uh, we'll shoot them a text message however they want us to communicate with them we make sure that they're in the loop you know like when uh when we were on the side of the road with that uh tire casing that blew out of that broke the uh airline off the brake chamber you know we weren't really in danger of not making it on time, but we still let the agent know. You know, we uh, we told him, "Hey, we're on the side of the road. We're gonna we're getting it fixed. It shouldn't be a problem. We can still make it on time. We'll let you know if anything comes up." And then at the end of the load, if if everything went well and it's somebody that we would want to work with, we'll just shoot them an email to say, "Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for the easy load. You know, if if you uh, have these pop up." You know keep us in mind or whatever or some of them even have a mailing list now so we're just like hey if you got a mailing list throw us on there you know shoot us your your list of of loads for the some some posts like at the beginning of the week they'll they'll drop all their loads you know like 10 20 whatever going to different areas and you can kind of just look and see what you're close by and if it's something you want to do uh so we're on probably I think five six seven different mailing lists from different agents so we get a, a variety of emails about loads that are out there and you know most of the ones that we're working with they pay pretty well so we're on a list for uh, TBC which is a carrier that does drop and hooks for tires you know like we we've ran two of their loads they're good loads if you're in Pennsylvania and you know they they get you a two pretty good areas pay really well uh, we have this one the so the cabinets that we went up I don't remember somewhere cold up up in the New England area those um, deli cases we're on that agents mailing list and sometimes she'll she'll reach out to everyone and be like hey we got this load that really needs to be picked up you know name your price pretty much type deal so it's awesome that they're reaching out to us and she reaches out to us specifically sometimes because we are a team and we could pick up something that's really late and still get there on time um, but you know that's out of Georgia I think like southern let's see southwestern Georgia I believe I don't I don't remember the exact location but anyway so we're on their mailing list you know we help them they help us so you know if things get tighter and and we need loads we could always reach out to these agents and uh we do that one out of lynchburg virginia all the time he messages us when he can't find coverage you know if, if we're in the area we'll do it we even have deadheaded dead headed i can talk i promise <laughs> we have deadheaded uh a decent uh, a distance to help him out on a load uh just because you know he looks out for us when he gets one in he'll like hit us up if if he has a new customer it's going to a different area you know he'll let us know we've ran some to uh i think louisiana illinois the one to tuila all the time um and then the next thing we've been booking ourselves out quite a bit i know a lot of people disagree with that uh they they would rather pick up the loads that the agents need ran that you can bid on and bid it up higher but I mean, for, for our business and how we run it, we prefer to be booked out. And we find a lot of the good paying loads get posted out a week, two weeks out. And they get snatched up really quick. So uh, we make a giant map of where we're going. And, you know, we always have load alerts on. 
uh, we are reaching out to the agents that we know in the areas. Uh, we're booking out, you know, a week, two weeks out, whatever. We try to stay only like two or three loads out, more on the two load kind of thing. But so we've been doing that quite a bit, and it's it's worked out fantastic. You know, we we try to stay booked out. Um, we find that a lot fewer loads get canceled on us when we're booking them out because if if you have them booked that far out it's typically direct agents it's loads that they always do um it's usually not 3pl stuff you know which there's nothing wrong with 3pl stuff uh you just have to be more cautious you know we would still take 3pl all day but i know that's another point of contention for a lot of people is they only want to do direct but I mean, there's been some not good direct agents as well, and a lot of great 3PL agents, and then everything in between. So the last one, uh, like I said, use all the tools available. So Landstar gives you the opportunity to look in a specific area to see what loads come out and how frequently and how many times a month it's ran to what areas. Uh, they have a tool, it's called lane matching, so if you want to do a lot of research and, and figure out what agent's shipping a lot of freight out, where it's going, how often it's, it's going there, uh, the lane match tool is fantastic for that. Uh, we haven't had to use it much, but like I said, we also came into Landstar when the rates were fantastic and you didn't have to do anything. Like the agents reach out to you to run stuff and now it's the other way around. And that's how the kind of market ebbs and flows you know like sometimes the customer can drop their prices and still have a ton of demand which is kind of where we're at and a lot of times the uh, truck drivers can increase their rate that they want to haul for and the customer has to comply so it's a give and take you know it, it's it's all business I don't I don't blame anybody if you want to start cutting rates because you can you know just remember when when the market flips the other way, you're gonna be paying more because we can. Um, it's kinda of how it goes, you know? So, I mean, I don't think we're, we're far from rock bottom on, on the, uh, the trucking industry or freight market, whatever you wanna call it. But, you know, everyone's just kinda of gotta prepare. Don't live outside your means, cover debt, don't, you know, as, as your as your pay increases, don't increase that lifestyle. Um, we kind of live like we are still broke and we bank a lot of the money. We don't have a house anymore because it was such a liability to, to sit, to have a house sit for months at a time with, you know, somebody popping over. And I can guarantee you friends and family are not going to take care of your property like you would want. And you can't blame them because it's not their job. Even if you're paying somebody to come over there, you know, you're still working around their schedule and stuff. And nobody's gonna go as in depth to take care of your place as you are. So we got rid of that. Um, we paid, you know, all of our vehicles are, are paid off. We don't have a loan aside from, you know, obviously the, the semi truck is a different category, but that's a business expense. We don't, we don't consider that on our personal expenses. Um, yeah, we just try not to live outside of our means. We, we go to Walmart, which we're at right now, a lot to get food so we're not eating truck stop food because just the cost of existing is going up uh, as part of the inflation. You know, food is costing more, fuel is costing more, obviously. Restaurants are raising their prices, the service is going down, they can't find people to work. So the experience of going out to eat isn't even that great anymore. You pay a lot of money, you wait a lot of time, and like the service is meh. So we uh, we try to stick to probably like 95% of food on the truck is, is what we eat. So we can park anywhere that we need to, you know, rest area, if the customer has overnight parking, things like that. And we don't have to worry about uh, Uber Eats or walking to a place or having to stop at a place with uh, food, anything like that. So we try to save money that way. Uh, we do a lot of the like maintenance and, and repairs and stuff on our own. Uh, just 
what was yesterday, day before? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, day before, uh, we had a grease gun and a tube of grease on the truck for when we would need it. And uh, the front end was getting this like clunk when we would accelerate uh, from a dead stop. So, I mean, I, I knew that just kind of typically it starts doing that when you need grease and then it started sounding like an old creaky f wooden floor um, at some point so it was definitely needing a grease and um, we stopped at a loves in sydney nebraska and we tried to get it done there we were just going to pay them to like be able to pull in get it done and leave and not have to you know grease it ourselves we we're gonna pay 35 40 bucks whatever I don't know what the charge is just out of convenience but they said that their lube bay was down I'm like yeah, yeah that's cool I we don't need an oil change just purely just the chassis lube and he was like yeah we can't do it I was like okay because their underground pit had some issues or something so they just closed the whole bay so I popped the uh, tube of grease into the grease gun and I got down and greased the fittings ourselves. So that saved us some time and money, mostly time, which is money <laughs> in an indirect way. Um, other than that, we just tried to not blow the money on, you know, silly things. So I don't know. Just kind of a, a long ramble i wanted to get a video out it was it's fun kind of seeing what the freight markets are in the different areas that we go to so looks like the uh oklahoma area is pretty good and uh fuel prices are not too bad they're still pretty high but so i think we're going to end this video here we're going to get this up and then we'll start tomorrow on the actual video of us uh in in transit with the load so thank you guys for watching and we will catch you on the next one